Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you my five current favorite GIMP tricks. These are some hidden features that I found recently while working in GIMP that I thought were really cool. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.18 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. But of course, before I get into that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP, Inkscape, and Darktable tutorials on here, as well as my GIMP book of layers and free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting gimpschool.com. And you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So the tricks I'll be covering in today's tutorial are essentially hidden features I've come across recently while working inside of GIMP. I'll start off with something light. Trick number one is something that was actually brought up to me by one of my subscribers. And this is the ability to perfectly fill in shapes that have already been drawn in your compositions. So looking at this composition I currently have open, I have two circles here. One has a hard edge and the other one has a fuzzy edge. So if I hold control and zoom in, the thing about hard edges in GIMP because it's a raster based program is that you have some semi-transparent pixels here. That's just the anti-aliasing basically happening. So those pixels of semi-transparency are helping this circle look smoother. The issue with that is whenever you try to change the existing color of a shape in GIMP or any raster based program for that matter, those areas of partial transparency can basically become fully transparent or they can just get skipped over entirely. So let me demonstrate if I come over here and I change my color to a red color and I'll click OK. So I have my bucket fill tool here. You can hit Shift B to grab that. And over in my tool options, I have this set to foreground color fill as well as fill hole selection. So if I come over here and I just click on the blue circle here, obviously that'll fill everything in. That's not helpful, so I'll back up. I can go to fill similar colors and click on here. Now the issue with this, as you could tell, is the edges look jagged here. It just doesn't look like a smooth circle. The issue here is that essentially the anti-aliasing has been overridden. So now instead of having areas of partial transparency that are going to make the circle look more round, now everything is fully opaque. So I'll hold control, zoom in. You can see that here. All the partial transparency areas have now been filled in. And if I come over here, it's even worse with this circle. So I'll click to fill that in. And all of our partial transparency areas are now basically fully transparent. And that ruins our circle. So I hit Control Z twice to back up. My trick to fix this is to simply come over here and click this little lock icon. So lock alpha channel. Then if you come over here with your bucket fill tool and you click to fill this in, you'll see now that perfectly fills in that circle and it leaves all the transparent areas there so the edges are still nice and feathered here, nice and soft. And same thing will happen over here with this circle. But let me back up, so another cool thing, so this is kind of like a bonus trick or trick 1A if you want to call it that. If you don't want to use your bucket fill tool, let's say you're working with another tool and you don't want to have to keep switching between tools, you could simply come over, click and drag your foreground color onto the layer and basically all the shapes here now inside of the layer will be filled in. This is also a good way to save a step because you don't have to click on both of these shapes with the bucket fill tool. You can simply drag the foreground color. Trick number two has to do with copying and pasting. So usually when you copy something, it's going to be copied onto what's called your clipboard and you can copy one thing at a time. So if I came over here, for example, and I had my circle selected, I'll hit control C. That'll copy this circles layer to my clipboard. And then if I come over to another composition and hit control V, that will paste these to whatever composition I wanted to paste this. So I'll hit Control Z to back up. Let's come back over to this composition. Control Shift C will copy visible. So that'll copy everything on our composition. And then come over here back to this other photo and Control V to paste. So that paste everything there. Of course, the issue is if I come back here, Control Shift C, but then I come over to another photo, Control C. That has now overridden our clipboard. And if I come back here, Control V to paste, that's what's being pasted. So trick number two specifically is that you can copy multiple items into your buffer dialog and then you could paste those items in whatever order you want. You can even paste them using some features which I'll get into here. So let me demonstrate here. First off, I already have my buffer dialog open over here. So if I just close this out real quick, the way you open that buffer dialog is by going to Windows, 
dockable dialogs. And down here, you'll see it's called buffers. So at the very top of the buffers dialog is going to be your regular clipboard. But what I can do is come over to an image I want to copy. So let's go with this yoga image and I can go to edit buffer. And if I go to cut names, that's the same as hitting control X, which would cut this item out. I don't want to do that. Copy named is the equivalent of going to control C. Copy visible named is the equivalent of going to control shift C and I'll get into paste in a moment, but let's start off with copy named. So that's just going to copy whatever active layer we have selected right now, which in this case is just this photo. And we can name this so that when it shows up in our buffer, it's going to have whatever name we label it as here. So in this case, I'm going to name it yoga POS for position and one. So this will come into play in a bit. I'll click OK. And now this has been saved to our buffer as a copied image, but I can continue doing this. So let's come over to this other yoga image and I'll come over to edit buffer copy named once again. So we'll go yoga position two. Click OK. And I'll come over to a third image here. Go to edit, buffer, copy named, yoga position three. And I'll click OK. So now if I come over to any one of these three items I've copied, so I'll click on this first one, you'll see we have a variety of options here now. If I hover my mouse, you can see what each of these features does. So the first one is just to paste this. So that will just paste this like it would normally if we did control C and then control V. So I hit control Z to undo that. Again, same thing with this one. I can just paste this into this composition. You'll see that this is actually pasted as a floating selection. So I can either add this to its own new layer. I can anchor it, which means it's going to automatically merge this layer with the bottom layer, or I can delete it, which is what I'll do here. So the third option here is to automatically paste the selected buffer, which is whatever the active buffer is here which in this case is yoga position two, to its own new layer. So that just kind of saves us a step. So if I click that, you'll see this is automatically pasted to a new layer. I'll hit control Z. Or the final option here is to paste this as a new image. In this case, it's not super useful because all of these were already their own images. But for example, if we were to copy the circles layer, so go to edit, buffer, copy named, we'll name it circles, click OK. So this is a layer, it's not its own image. I can click on this, click the fourth option here, and that will paste this as its own new composition. So I'm just going to exit out of this, discard the changes, and I also wanna delete this circles buffer here so I can click the last icon, which is this X icon. So that will delete the selected buffer. And that brings us back to these three buffers. That also leads us to trick number three, and that is the ability to paste objects directly inside of selection areas. So this essentially allows you to quickly create framed layers or framed images inside of another composition. And this will involve the buffers we've been working with. So let's first come over to a new composition. So here I've got this other yoga photo. And what I'm gonna do here is create three circles and they're basically going to act as frames. For those of you who have ever used Photoshop, you'll know Photoshop has a frame feature. This is essentially the same thing to that, the equivalent to that. Not exactly the same, but very close. So let's come over and grab the ellipse tool and let's click to draw an ellipse, hold the control key to draw from the center, hold the shift key to maintain a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. Let's go with something about right there and then I'll just move this into place. Let's actually scale this down a bit, holding the shift key. So there we've got our first ellipse. I'm gonna draw two more. So I'll come over to my ellipse select tool options and click add to current selection. This allows me to draw another selection area. Once again, I'll hold control and shift. Let's make this one smaller, drag it up here. And we'll change the mode one more time to add to the current selection. Draw a third circle, a third ellipse. Maybe we'll scale this down holding control and shift. So now we have three circles and what I'll do is paste each one of these into one of the circles. But first I'll come over and create three new layers over here in my layers panel. So I'll click to create the first new layer. So we'll name this one circle one. Make sure it's filled with transparency and click OK. And I'll just click to create a new layer. Once again, circle two. And I'll do one more circle three, click okay. 
So we've got three circle layers here. Let's click on the first circle layer. So this is going to be where we paste our first image. So I'll come over here to my buffers dialog and click on this first buffer. So once again, coming down to the bottom, you'll see here it says paste the selected buffer into the selection. So when I click that option, that's going to paste that first buffer item here into the composition. It's just a floating selection layer though right now, so we need to adjust this. First, I'll hit the M key to grab my move tool and just move this into place. So I'll have this one be the larger circle to start. Now, of course, the problem is this is way too large. So what I'll do is hit Shift M. That will grab my measure tool here from my toolbox. And I'm just going to measure how big this circle is here. So you can see down here, it says about 655 pixels. So using that as a reference, I'll come over here to my floating selection, right click and go to scale layer. And I'll make this a little larger than 650 so it fits in there nicely. Let's go with something like 800 and hit the tab key, 800 for the height, and make sure that your chain icon is linked so that the aspect ratio is maintained here. Under quality, I'm just gonna keep this at low halo, which ensures that there isn't a ton of quality loss during the scale. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to that subject, but then I'll come over and click scale. So that will scale our current floating selection layer there. I'll hit the M key and move this into place once again. This might be a little small, so right click, scale layer. Let's just go a little larger, 850, hit the tab key, hit scale, and move this into place. Once we have it where we want it, I'll come over here and I'm going to click this little anchor icon. That's going to anchor this floating selection layer to the circle layer. So I'll click on that and here is our first item. Of course, I still have the two other selection areas here. So what I can do is come over here to circle two, come back up to yoga position two, and once again, click that paste into icon. Then I'll hit shift M to grab that measure tool. Let's just see how large the circle is here. So about 275 there. Right click on the floating selection layer and we'll go to scale layer. So we want this to be a little bit bigger than the small circle here. So I'll change this to 350 and I'll hit scale, hit the M key and let's move this into place. And then we'll come over to our floating selection and I'll click to anchor that. And we'll do the same thing here for the third circle. So I'll click on that, come over to yoga position three, click the paste into option, shift M. We can grab our measure tool this circle is about 477. Come over here, right click, scale layer. So let's go with 550, so it's a little larger. Actually, let's make the height 550 instead. Hit the tab key, hit scale. M to grab the move tool. Move this into place here. And there is our third circle. Coming over to the floating selection layer, we'll anchor that. So now we have everything where we want it. Control shift A to deselect that. And using a combination of trick number two, which was the buffers and trick number three, which is pasting into a selection. Now we have all three of these circles here with these photos. Of course, if you're not using buffers and you're just using your regular clipboard, you can go to edit, paste into selection or paste into selection in place. And that will perform the same task there. All right, so tricks number four and five have to do with customizing the user interface. So trick number four is going to be customizing the color of the padding around your canvas. So by default, the color of your canvas is going to be whatever color the theme dictates. So in this case, the color of the padding is the same color as the color of the dialogue surrounding this. If I wanted to change this, I can go to view, padding color, and we've got some default options here. So we've got from theme, which is what this is set up for now. Light check color or dark check color. So let's go with light check color. As you can see, that gives us a combination. So the padding and the dialogue surrounding it are going to be two different colors now. Or I can customize this further. We can go to view, padding color, and come down here to custom color. And now we can make this any color we want. So for example, I can make this that blue color we were working with earlier or I can just choose a totally random color, maybe something like this pinkish color, and I'll click OK. So now the padding around our GIMP will be whatever that custom color was that you just set. Of course, I don't like the way that looks, so I'm gonna to go to View, Padding Color, 
and let's just go with from theme for now. Finally, trick number five is the ability to customize the tabs that display for the various compositions you have open in GIMP. So right now we're in this composition, obviously, and up top it has a tab. So by default, all the tabs are gonna be at the top of your canvas, but you can actually change the position of these. And you can do that by going to Windows, Tabs Position. So by default, this is set to top. You can change it to bottom. So that will switch everything down below the canvas or you could change it to left or right. So let's go with the left option for now. So that moves everything over here. And if you wanna get these tabs out of the way for whatever reason, you can also go to Windows and then come over here to Show Tabs. So if you uncheck that, that's just going to hide your tabs entirely. Of course, in my case, I have this images dialog open and this allows me to cycle through whatever images I have open. So for example, if I double click on here, that will open up this composition. And by the way, if you don't have this images dialog, you can of course go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, Images, and that will open that up. So before I go, I just wanna reset for you guys. So coming down here to Circles, let's unlock the alpha channel. That might be a pain in the butt for you guys later if you keep that locked on accident, depending on the composition you're working on. And I'll go to Windows, Show Tabs, and that will bring our tabs back up. And in my case, I'm just going to reset this back to the default. So I'll go with the top tab there, the top tab position. All right, so that's it for my five GIMP tricks. Hopefully you guys liked this tutorial. If you did, you can check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.